For the ninth consecutive year, the global military spending increased where it reached an all-time high last year in 2023, up to $2.4 trillion with a T. A recent report from the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, or CIPRI, showed the findings. It went on to say, the 6.8% increase in 2023 was the steepest year-on-year -year rise since 2009 and pushed global spending to the highest level CIPRI has ever recorded. Now, CIPRI has recorded global military spending all the way back to 1998, and 2023 was its highest ever. CIPRI also said, the rise in global military spending in 2023 can be attributed primarily to the ongoing war in Ukraine and escalating geopolitical tensions in Asia, Oceania, and the Middle East. Military expenditure went up in all five geographical regions with major spending increases recorded in Europe, Asia, Oceania, and the Middle East. Half of the world's military spending comes from just two countries, the United States and China. Together, the top 10 in 2023 accounted for almost three quarters, or 74%, of the world total. I think the following paragraph from the report is important and concerning. U.S. military spending was $916 billion in 2023, which was 2.3% 2 more in 2022 and 9.9% more in 2014. The U.S. remained by far the largest spender in the world, allocating 3.1 times more to the military than the second largest spender, China. The biggest percentage increase among all U.S. military spending categories in 2023 was for Research, Development, Test, and Evaluation, or RDT&E. The U.S. spent 9.4% more in real terms on RDT&E than in 2022. The U.S. has prioritized RDT&E spending in relative terms over all other military spending categories since around 2014. This aligns with its decision to shift its focus away from counterinsurgency operations and asymmetric warfare to developing new weapon systems that could be used in a potential conflict with adversaries with advanced military capabilities. It is concerning that the Pentagon is spending a lot more money on research and development. The main reason for this is because the U.S. ruling class is shifting gears from counterinsurgency operations mainly in Iraq and Afghanistan for the past two decades, to preparing for conflicts with more powerful countries like Russia and China, both of which are spending more and more on their own militaries, especially investment into high-tech weapons, including space-based weapons, satellites, and generally more tech for outer space. This is why the global network focuses on issues of space and military tensions. It is a growing concern, and more and more spending, research, and development is going towards outer space conflicts, which includes a new arms race in space, as well as missions to mine planetary bodies across the solar system. But this also shows a concern about the priorities of the U.S. ruling class. And while the U.S. capitalist class is outspending the entire world and testing its military toys, child poverty at home has doubled. A year before this rate doubled in 2022, child poverty reached a historic low of 5.2%. Then it doubled in the next year in 2023 to 12.4%. The main reason is due to the fact that in 2021, Congress increased the amount of the credit as part of the American Rescue Plan and expanded eligibility to include millions more low-income families. But when the pandemic relief ended, millions of families lost out on this credit for their kids because they didn't make enough money. Melissa Botech, a vice president of the National Women's Law Center, said in a statement, This data once again highlights that poverty in our country isn't a personal failing, but rather a policy choice. 
All of this was occurring in the same year that global military spending reached an all-time high, and the U.S. accounting for nearly half of that total. I can't say this enough. The U.S. ruling class only cares for the working class insofar as they need our labor. So, in that case, they only need us to show up for work the next day. And they mainly pay the working class barely enough to show up. Their primary concern is to protect their interests, their investments, their capital. So when a capitalist class from another country threatens the U.S. ruling class's interests, they will do everything they can to protect their investments, even at the cost of the working class, which has happened historically in all countries where capitalism reigns supreme. No one in their right mind should be sympathetic to these parasites. The capitalist class will bring the world to an end if that's what it takes to protect their interests. And in that case, they don't have any interests to protect. Capitalism is reaching its end. Global military spending is reaching historic heights. And the world is becoming such a dangerous place that many are questioning if we will even survive as a species. We must understand that there is no progressive capitalism. There is no saving it. It must end. And we must do everything in our power to end it sooner rather than later.